Hello, Cloud Chasers. My name is Christian. I'm always joined by Harvai. And this is episode 13 or something, right? Yeah. 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 We're chugging along. We're chugging along. Uh, we are fresh from Liverpool uh, Championship Finals, where we played um, the Champions Finals, right? Uh, it's the most prestigious uh, tournament aside from World for us. So, a very big deal. And we prepared quite a lot for it, especially because it was a very weird format. Mm, quite and a we lot. Tried to, yeah, quite, we tried to... Yeah. I want to say quite a lot in like a relative sense, because we actually found out that we are able to go a very last minute. Like We were doing some preparations in hopes that we would get a ticket, of course, because we are planning to go anyways, but then we only got a ticket like a week and a half before the event, and that we did really grind in those week and a half, which is why you would have noticed the slowdown of content on the Patreon and on YouTube, but uh, yeah, we did we did uh, put in as much work as we could for the event. Uh, to, to like expand on that, uh, essentially, if we if we got the tickets like a month before, we would of course plan for it and probably test for the whole month. This way, we just played some, thought about some, and only when we confirmly confirmed the tickets did we go full on uh, prep mode, which is yeah, essentially only a week and a half. And that prep was interesting. So, on my side, I definitely, definitely easily uh, thought that I can bring uh, yellow, uh, like yellow Luffy, which I, spoiler alert, in the end I did up, end up taking, simply because I had a really a lot, a lot of prep work. And I also th thought that he's relatively decent in the meta. Uh, but, Aside from, uh, aside from Luffy, we spent a lot of time working on some other decks. Uh, I did a lot of work on Dofi, and at some point, Harvaya was like, well, Christian, Rebecca might be onto something. And we then spent almost more than a week on Rebecca. I spent way more than a week. It, is, yeah, yeah. it uh, goes back but, to but, locals of 20th of August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I only uh, got, got in after we uh, we talked about it. Yeah, yeah, on the, only a week before. And we spent so much time on Rebecca. Uh, in the end, I decided not to go with Rebecca because I really didn't like the... Uh, I didn't want to gamble on, on the Lich Magic. Uh, we couldn't figure it out. And it it was something I didn't want to risk. Uh, but, uh, Horvay, you decided to go with Rebecca. Anyways. Yeah, so the reason I... Even though you, oh. you, you also, like, I, I still remember very vividly, uh, we're in a room, uh, you're on the... Uh, uh, you're on the bed and you're like... You know, I'm I'm this close to just taking your black elf list and then and running with it. Yeah, and so that was like fifteen minutes before we go to sleep and we have to wake up for the tournament. Okay, so let me explain the thought process there. First of all, why Rebecca? Well, when the ban, ban list came, I was like, wait, this deck might be good, but I didn't have a ticket for finals, so I just started bringing her to locals and uh, generally just uh, having fun trying to figure out if this could be a call for 08. And I was like, wait, this this. You know, has some legs. Then I got a ticket and started testing like more and more builds. And uh, yeah, ultimately the problem was always, well, Ra Rage matchup is just awful. But I decided to just ignore that. Every deck has a matchup that is awful. Yeah, and like Rage is still like a. Rage, no, Rage was a lot more popular than than I expected, but I'll that get to that. Uh, but we did expect it's a it's a tier it's almost a tier two deck. Right? That deck cannot win a tournament. Two. I I I decide not to respect it. That 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 was yeah. the. But where was I? Uh, so yeah, the Witcher matchup uh, generally black. The way Rebecca wins games is you strip your opponent's hand, and then if if there's a card which breaks those rules where the hand size doesn't represent the actual hand size, then you're kind of you know falling behind. And Moria does that in the Witcher matchup. So if Witcher gets to have a very neat uh, curve and just sees multiples of his eight costs. Uh, you're kind of screwed. Uh, you have to. You basically have to hope for games where you play engine against engine, where it's your Dressrosa cards against his CP cards, and those games you, you win. Like, oh, definitely. You, you, 
it can be struggled, but you definitely win those games because your your engine eventually just outvalues theirs. Uh, but yeah, those games where they see multiple Morias or they have like a re really nice curve of six was broken into Moria into Moria, it's like back it up. Uh, but ultimately, I decided to gamble on it just because there were so many matchups in the meta which were so so good, and I was like, sure, if if I, you know, just dodge enough of the bad matchups in Swiss and top, I will probably face the the Black Hill Luffy's and possibly some Bonnies, Namis, and those a crush, and then I have a probably a hopefully a smooth sailing in in top cut. Of course, that was also a wrong prediction because in the end, Uchi was the most represented deck in top cut, I believe, uh, and. He was the most represented in Swiss, but not by the margin I expected. Like I expected Swiss to have like 20 to 25 percent of Black Yellow Luffy, just because I think it's the perceived best deck of the format. Like it, I, I can't think of anyone who, if you ask them what's the best deck in the format, would not answer Black Yellow Luffy or Nami, just because Nami is a, a very uh, you know meta targeting pick. But Black Yellow Luffy just seemed like the strongest deck, and I expected higher rep representation than he got in the end. I think there was even more Bonnies than Luffy's or something like that. And uh, I expected much less Reiju than we got. We got like 10 or 11% of the room on Reiju. And usually in Europe it was always like 4 to 5%. So that was an unpleasant surprise. But yeah, in the end, uh, the, it, it was a meta call. Like I, I was hoping that I would get to farm people banking on the strongest pick because Re Rebecca is really strong into, into Black Hill Luffy, into Nami, into Bonnie, into NL. And it didn't pan out that way. I'm not dissatisfied with the. Uh, with how the tournament went though, uh, as Christian said, I was flip-flopping until the last moment because ultimately this format is about, you know, you have to choose what you want to lose to and where you are going to give up those those points. And I don't feel like I gambled wrong just because my matchup spread did involve like a lot of bonnies as well, so, you know, I would have just lost those games on, on Black Hill Luffy anyways, possibly. Where I could have break into NL or rain into any of the black decks, like who knows. So, yeah, in the end I just decided to to cut the crap, like I tested Rebecca for like several weeks at that point, no point going back on that and making all that waste of time, I'll just commit to Rebecca and if it goes well, it goes well. It went like, alright, uh, I would have hoped for more, but it's the type of format, like even the Italians who innovated with, uh, with the starter 14 Luffy, which was real nice of them by the way, like and unexpected. Even not all of them performed, like, I think from K2 or Desire now, only Giovanni topped, so it's just the type of format. You you throw your dice and uh, hope they, they land on good numbers. But yeah, I, I do not regret picking Rebecca. And uh, I was, as I said, very, very close to, uh, to joining you. Uh, the thing that flopped me was the frustration with Luchi. Um, it was, we banged our head against the wall with that matchup for way too long. And it was so frustrating because, uh, it seems like it's going well and they keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming, it, it's, your gameplay just does not gel well with, um, with yeah. that deck. And no particular build solved that problem, like, I, I tried, like, some of the builds I tried basically looked nothing like Rebecca, it was, uh, it was Sakazuki yeah. in a Rebecca shell. And uh, yeah. it, yeah, it's like you, you accept it's a, a worse match than most, and uh, work with it. like you can still win games. So like you can still win a fair number of games. It's just specifically those games where they see the the so called nuts or above average hands where you are struggling. But uh, I was fine accepting that. Also expecting lower which representation, but yeah. And I do have to. Uh, the whole thing with uh, uh, do as we say, not do as we do. As in, uh, could we almost flip flop to another deck the day before? Please, guys, uh, do not do that. And uh, you will also see uh, in the interviews uh, how our friends decided to pick a deck. It's definitely not the the best scientific way to, to do it. Uh, we always keep telling you, yes, take at least a week or two to decide on a deck, and then you really have to grind it to basically know the situations, know the, all the key moments in, in the matchup and how to adapt to them. And uh, yeah. Uh, 
I don't know, I don't know what, what else to say. Like, uh, the, the, this flip flopping really works, and it's only like a showcase of extreme problems we had in our testing rates. Yeah, it's I mean, not a, where, where we want to be. Yeah, compared to like the first finals in January, uh, my level of confidence in my preparation was way, way, way lower. Like, for January, I knew it was going to be Sakazuki from like mid December. Like, after Paris, I was before Paris, I was like, ah, probably Sakazuki. Like, we'll, we'll explore other options. But after Paris, I was like full locked in on Sakazuki, and we were doing like the weekly playtesting meets where we would also like discuss which picks we were. Um, planning to bring and there were a few people in our group who were like changing deck choice every week or two but I was just you know, locked on Sakazuki from from like two months prior and then I had the exact list that I ended up playing in in Utrecht I think I was one card off like three weeks before the event so it was just like the level of preparation and confidence in it was much 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 higher which obviously was, the format was like that there was not as many decks not as many not as much variance in what you can face so it was like much more uh, reliably, you can much more reliably prepare your game plan for every situation and then work from that. And I think that showed in the result because obviously uh, I did quite well in Utrecht, but uh, not so well here, even though I tried to go with a similar deck concept of black blue and abusing the most broken cards in the game. Well, on my side, I ended up with the, the usual quote unquote black yellow Luffy. And I prefer that build simply because. Um, what kind of thing means is he he ran aces. He ran yeah yeah, and not the controlly version with the pistols. Uh, basically, it's much stronger in Nami, and we were kind of really really focused on Nami because we really believe that it's going to be the deck, and the deck has been performing quite well. And uh, like I played three Namis at the last Treasure Cup, so. I was really, um, that was really something on my mind. And yeah. aces, it, it's almost, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's very hard to win without aces. Which I, um, which showed in testing and also it showed in uh, those Treasure Cups because I think I I lost two out of those three um, games. Yeah, we... Simply because your only attackers are essentially uh, Awaken and Luffy's. And even if you see like two or three of them, one, one snake dance trigger completely throws you off. It's much harder to uh, like load your barrel with a with a bullet. Essentially, preparing uh, kids and not uh, using them. Right. Uh, one of the greatest uh, plays you can make uh, when they're on when you're on like eight. Just play Moria, take out baby uh, baby ace and whatever a guard, and then. Ask them with, with all their open dawn, and the next turn you start uh, taking out uh, all the big uh, big brothers and going all in. Okay, but he here's the question: I If you were to play the event again, knowing what you know about the top cut, that every Luffy at the top was on the control build, would you take the the ace build? I would still take this because this build is better into the controlling build than the controlling build. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that was that's the other part of the argument uh, that this build is better in the mirror uh, because it essentially forces your opponent to awaken before you, and if they do not respect Ace, uh, you also can strip like two or three cards, which can win the game on the spot. Uh, it's basically a build which is more comfortable uh, going down to life sooner and applying more pressure. Yeah, because you have which, more kids to reliably buff up the leader, and then you're you're kind of chilling. Yeah, and the other build doesn't have uh, as many kids, right? Yeah. So you can easily put them in a position where they can just jump to seven if you pressure them early, right? Uh, and at that point, you might even take three or up to three cards, right? Um. So yeah. Uh, I I still think that uh, that deck choice was correct. Well, let's uh, to the stories and, and, and the matchups. Uh, on my side, my first loss was very early, round two. I play Purple Luffy. And I get a relatively unlucky Law discard. Which is fine. I set up things. Like more and something else, probably. Uh, no, no. I'm on my only kid and my only 2k. Mm. 
And uh, his relatively long life, I basically have to have to push a bit, so I had to awaken. Um, and at that point, I have two Modias and four 1Ks in my hand. And he doesn't have to go all in. But he makes an attack where he can go 9 and 10 after that, essentially going all in. But that way he cannot play any blockers anymore. And for me to counter that, I would have to give four of my one case and be left with just an audience. And that's actually what I should have done uh, because my opponent decides to go all in. But no, you should have just looked very surprised at the attack and like, and take. That, that's the strat uh, well, for those. Th that's what I did and, and I ended up dying. Um, you need to work on your eyebrow game. Possibly, possibly. Um, yeah, it, I, it's very bizarre for your opponent to commit to essentially you uh, you being unable to counter a nine k with six cards, but it paid up for him in the end. Uh, and I could have played around it if I put different life um, with leader ability, essentially. If I know that, he, and it, I kind of got the vibes that my opponent wanted to go all in uh, from the way he countered the previous turn. Right? Uh, because if I counter, then his card just clears my um, Awakener Luffy, and he probably just plays two blockers. And at that point, I have a Moria, and I'm a 9k leader with uh, a Sabo, and I'll probably draw another card. What I'm trying to say is, uh, I. What I did was I put two life in a way that uh, that's like I expect to lose those two life or at least one of those two lives, right? And I'm prepared to awaken uh, the next time uh, with the Maria, but I did not prepare to not take any of those two lives to basically keep uh, all two of them. Which, as I said, if I think that I have to counter. Uh, all of the attacks. It's what I should have done. So, a pretty tough position, which I could have played around if, essentially, if I, if I took more time. I, I have this constant issue, and I already told you, and I'm, I'm having a really hard time trying to get rid of it. Uh, my pace of play is just too fast. Um, and I still do believe that it's, it comes from board games where uh, it's nice you're playing fast and uh, it's more enjoyable for uh, the rest of the table, yeah. yeah, that you're not taking uh, all the time in the world to, to make the best move. And here, if I take like five minutes to think what and how my opponent goes all in, because, like, to be honest, I didn't even consider that he will go all in from that position. But that's what it is. Uh, and then round four, I play Rejo. I have a very decent game. I play around pulling because that's the main thing you have you, you have to do. And essentially, what happens is I'm on seven cards. He swings. He puts the dawn under his leader on six down. Swings seven, and I'm like, well, I have to counter with two cards to respect pulling, right? I come through two cards. And I know that he has small HG and big HG. Okay, so he swings five with Porsche. I take, I'm on two life. And I have six cards in hand. And he plays Pudding. So he had Pudding when I had seven cards. But he decided to greet it, swung seven. And he has HG. I know that he has small HG and he has the big HG in the disc pile. And I'm like, dude. What? Uh, and he uh, mulligans into uh, mulligans me into a bricky hand, essentially, uh, where I couldn't uh, help myself to to seven. Which, in hindsight, once again, I could have played softly around by essentially discarded a card that I didn't need. Uh, 
when I encountered with the seven. Like with counter counter with the garb instead of sub or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I could have counter with uh, with a five cost uh, sub and uh, I, I I could save myself. And then what happens? Turn after that, he plays immediately judge because he didn't minus himself at all, and he had the the whole shebang. Um, and at that point, I'm looking at my dawn and I see two dawn. I'm like, okay, next turn I can do Moria. And I counter the way that to prepare for my Moria. And I go to my turn and, he, and my opponent's like, no, no, you're nine done. And then I remember, yeah, I, I did went first. I don't know what happened there. Maybe one of the dons got, uh, under the other one and it completely threw my, uh, I was already in a bad position, but now I couldn't even recover. And that's the next two. Uh, we keep winning up to pretty late rounds. And then something like round eight or nine. I play versus NL. And I see no awakening cards. I mean, I do, I do see like, uh, one plumpet, but, uh, no way to, uh, to awaken fully. And he just keeps dropping big bodies. Uh, and then all the guys uh, make fun of me because I keep telling them that uh, NL is a pretty good match for Black Hill Luffy. And then I lose to NL. Uh, that's the, the only way that, the only time I think that, that I kind of let myself uh, down. Uh, because I played two Sabos and three Searchers and I couldn't find the, the big Luffy. And then I had to basically rely on aces, but uh, he had his aces, right? And uh, I, I, I could not make enough of uh, like resource lead with the with the aces. That was it. And uh, then the last round I played, so now I'm out of the contention. But I was already out because I lost uh, the other rounds. And then I played versus. Uh, the start of Luffy. And at that point, uh, essentially, he had a very uh, clean time uh, with my board. Uh, essentially, I think he went first, yeah. Uh, he plays uh, Rook on 3. Uh, I do what I usually like to do versus uh, the deck that is to just do here yes and do a lot of pressure uh, swing sevens twice right and put him uh, because uh, Luchi usually doesn't have a lot of uh, two way counters and that's basically my only play on four so I put him down to one life very early uh, but he has ice age to clear uh, clear my ace uh, then apply breaking the Luffy like I'm I'm still fine. Then he uh, sanches it. Then uh, I do awaken the Luffy again. Be preparing to to awaken. And then on nine, because he has a stage now, he can do Sanji and Borsalino because Sanji doesn't uh, need the Dawn under the leader anymore because he's now a six. Uh, so yeah, uh, he cleared everything I played. Uh, then I got Anisha played, and then he played Amoria, Amoria. Um, I, I put him down to one life, but uh, then he just keeps playing blockers, and I can't get through. And that, that's how I end. 6-4. Uh, I have to say, very frustrating and very unsatisfied. With the results, and uh, yeah, um, still satisfied with my prep work. As in, I, I think the deck choice was correct, and the the, the deck list I think was also correct. It's just uh, yeah, uh, wasn't my day. Uh, how about you? And then I think we'll discuss the. The the breakout rope deck of the tournament. 
so for me it was yeah uh with rebecca the plan was very simple just dodge reju and of course around one i show up to the table feeling like fairly at peace now that i'm certain i'm playing this deck and i'm confident in it and it's reju but i win roll so i'm thinking okay maybe maybe we can, we can do this because there are strats to beat reju they're just not very reliable and i make him go first and he starts by he, he insta keeps the hand he plays stage I don't remember what I do to probably search plus Colosseum or something. His three, he plays Porch, uh, brings out small HG, or like searches, finds a chopper or something, brings out small HG. He discarded the, the big HG already on turn one, upgrades. So yeah, that start already means I probably lost. But uh, I keep trying to play, but then he has small rage into big rage, so now his hand size is eight. And then the turn after that, he plays the second HG and. It's already super doomed by this point, but then he also flexes on me because then he goes chopper and turn after he he brings out the judge. Yeah, whatever. Round two is ML, I think. Uh, yeah, at some point I'm putting him and just start blasting away at his active board. Like he has, I knew before putting him he had a lot of uh, what's the word for it? Uh, the big units because I hit Shirahoshi in his life and he actually discarded one Katakuri. Uh, for the Shirahosh, and I was like, okay, I'm definitely putting him in this turn, because uh, you don't usually attack into an L, but if you're going to put him, might as well to get that extra card out. And uh, yeah, just out grind him fairly easily. It's a favorite matchup. Like, at some point, you just bring in Seven Cost Luffy, or f first you play some Morias just so they Katakuri those to the bottom of your life, and then you play Seven Cost Luffy and use him to clear out the active Ace, the active Yamato, whatever. Like, you don't allow him to keep to keep much because at, when you're putting him, he's already on low hand. It goes fairly naturally. Then round three and four were bonnies. Uh, one of those I completely destroyed. Like I think I won with five life, and the other was a bit more challenging. I think I won with three life. But yeah, those are once again very favorite matchups where you know they play stuff. Uh, you either remove it or set up to remove it, and uh, the reach of this deck is quite insane. Eventually, they run out of big bodies and you just keep swinging over their active stuff with the Luffy. Round 5 was Black Yellow Luffy, who didn't really know how to play the matchup, so I absurdly stomped him. Like On 3 done, he swing 5 with Leader and 5 with Garp, which you should always just swing 8 with Leader in, into Rebecca. Uh, so yeah, I won with 5 life in the end, just completely destroying him. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, uh, that was one of the appeal of Rebecca. Uh, the Black Yellow matchup was... Very, very good. Yeah, I mean, even they know how to play, you probably still beat them, because at some point yeah. you probably resolve Pudding, and that's where all their dreams and hopes die. You got Pudding, uh, your uh, Luffy's can attack Sabos, yeah. so you can easily uh, clear Sabos. Yeah. Uh, set setting up a late game lethal is extremely easy, because you only there, need one yeah. seven cost Luffy on the board and any other body, and it doesn't even have to be a big body, because you like give Luffy three Dawn, swing 10-10 into the two Sabos, then you King Kong on the body and attach all the other Dawn and you just kill them. That's how it usually goes. Uh, and then round six, well, they have only one sabo, then just King Kong gun, kill the sabo, go face, and that's it. Round six, I sit down at the table, and it's so nice. I'm surrounded by friends on like all sides, like playing against some against each other, some against other people, and we're just chit chatting. And my opponent's not there, and I'm waiting and waiting. And okay, maybe he doesn't show up, maybe free win sucks for tiebreakers, but you know, free win. But then he shows up at like 26.30 on the clock, and he's like, ah, oh, you can take the win, I arrived late. And I'm like, no, 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 it's five minutes for, for game loss, so we, we can still play. And he pulls out the witch, and I'm like, okay, might be bad, he wins the idol, I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, gonna be a bit of a struggle. And then his 8 on turn comes, he plays Isha. His 10 on turn comes, he plays... Uh, Moria into Rebecca, Helme, Panda, and Luchi, like the full combo. Uh, I deal with a bit of it, but... At this point, it's already looking not good. Then next turn, he does another Re uh, Moria into Rebecca, Helmepo, Spanda, and Lucian. Like, oh, I just lost. But then next turn, he does the third one just to ensure that I would have lost. So, yeah, I just get uh, full comboed by yet another bad matchup. And the only thing that uh, that comforts me there is that I don't think any deck I play in the in that position wins me the the match. So it's like whatever. Uh, then round seven. I won't say it was another Black Yellow Luffy, but that might be incorrect. I'm trying to remember what my match was. Yeah, it should have been another Black Yellow Luffy. 
Uh, this guy played uh, a little bit more familiar with Rebecca. At some point, he he actually didn't attack with leader because he realized he only has a 5k swing available, and I'm on 7 in hand, so if he attacks, I get to have leader ability next turn. So he played with leader ability in mind, but I still won very comfortably. Uh, I think I played all three 7 cost Luffy's that, that game, so it was... It was basically, he had a really strong opener, he played well, but I just, you know, did the thing where Rebecca puts down defensive resources on the board and just outlasts the ability of Black Yellow Luffy to put up, uh, you know, Moria walls. I put with him, he still had two or three more, two Morias actually. Yeah, two Morias, but even if you have the third one, it won't matter because as you set up defensive resources, you set up bodies and then you use those bodies to just win the game in one turn. Uh, so... Yeah, that was a win. And then round 8 to play against Gekko Moria. I think an Italian player who played really well. He also had a strong opener like Perona into Perona. But I think I misplayed that game. Uh, so obviously it's Gekko Moria, so he has one Moria to hand naturally. And he had a, a Nisho and another Moria like hard drawn. But there was a point in mid game where I was debating whether I could whether I could safely drop the 7 cost Luffy. And I definitely should have because what happened was... I keep the 7 cost Luffy in hand, and then I draw another from life and another from top of deck, and suddenly I have 3 cards in my hand I can do nothing with. And there the game just falls out of my control, and he plays like really really well, so all the credits to him. And I lose, and then round 9 I play against Areju, and here he opens like slow-ish, he has the stage, but he cannot find all the pieces to like assemble everything. And he also, I think, minus is a bit too much, because he plays the 1 cost Sanji, so like turn 2? So that's already a minus one he didn't have to take. I think the matchup is slow enough that you don't need the, the extra draw power on the Rage side. And uh, I set up the 7 cost Luffy plus Moria plus King Kong and plus Hellblaze, and I just kill him in like 3 attacks. Uh, which is pretty much the only way you win into, into Rage. Like you set up that combo where you one shot them. And then round 10 was another Luchi. Uh, grindy game. He only sees one Moria plus one Nisho. So yeah, it ends up quite grindy, we go to time, and I win that, and that's that's it, 73 in Swiss, 80, 82nd, I want to say, or 85th, I, I always forget, and I get my packs, collect them, I don't open anything nice, but overall, a pretty cool experience, and I'll be cooking Rebecca for OPO8 a bit, along some other stuff, because OPO8 looks like, without... Like, finally we get a format where, where we're not, you know, just copy-pasting Japan, or Asia, rather. Uh, so, everything is on the table. Yeah, even the, like, the strongest black card, which, like, every... All the eyes are on that card, uh, Jack, right? Yeah. But that card really uh, liked stage. Now, without stage, we even have to ask, uh, is Jack that... Such an easy out include in the list anymore? I think it is. It probably is. But it's definitely like one whole great weaker. Yeah, I think the. Are, is one or both finals without the starter decks? Because I think if it's both, it gets really interesting for us. But if it's. Oh, definitely. If it's 1 1, it's also like still different from everything uh, Asia played and hopefully some really cool innovation. Speaking of innovation though, there was a deck that uh, caught all the people unaware this weekend, and it was the Star 14 uh, Luffy, you know, three days, two years uh, starter, uh, brought out by the Italians of... Uh, I I'm As far as I know, it was the, the Desire guys who cooked it up, the, the former K2. Uh, so Antonino and Matteo, Giovanni the and Desire. Roberto. I think Pierre also played it. Yeah, he, he developed it separately, which is... Yep. You know, it's really funny because the last time this happened, it was last Liverpool where the Italian players won the red, purple, Luffy, and the French guys, uh, Pierre and Flesh, Flesh being the winner of uh, of this uh, finals, they were on red, purple, wall, both like developed separately, and they also met up in the finals. It was I don't remember if it was Flesh against Giovanni or Pierre against Giovanni, but I'm pretty sure they all performed very well. So. <laughs> Give credit to where guys uh, we also like started testing this, but we gave up uh, way too early uh, and focused on uh, once again. And yeah, one, once, Kill, yeah, once again, there was on our side a lot of emphasis on the Nami matchup. We really expected yeah, it yeah. To, to have a higher showing at the finals, and 
It turned out that most of the good players just didn't uh, care for an army, didn't care to play it, or... I assume they tested against it, but they just didn't want to play it, despite the... Oh, I mean, I, I, I talked to the uh, to Giovanni and the rest of the guys, and uh, their answer is the one you expect. Uh, just don't see them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's one thing you do in this meta. You decide, okay, I'm just going to dodge this matchup and uh, hope yeah, it's yeah, a valid enough strategy. We today. essentially stopped there. Uh, we... Uh, we played a deck, and uh, two two things uh, were arguments which made us drop the deck. One is it's even worse in Toonami than Luchin, right? Which is already a problem, at least in our opinion. And the other was uh, some slight inconsistencies uh, because the leader does not mill any cards. Yeah, it's the and same, therefore similar issue to Perona, right? Where just setting up the trash is a challenge in and of itself. But also, they did uh, consider some angles we didn't, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so, we're, so we're not like, trying to say we did the same thing and then no, no, gave no, up. No, not like... at all. It's more like it, it, it wasn't out of the blue. Like, we, we also tried to do it, but we gave up very, very early. Okay. Uh, so, that was the tournament. Uh, thank you to everyone who came and said hi. Uh, we signed some cards, we took some pictures. Uh, we always enjoy that part of the, of the experience. Uh, for the rest of the podcast, uh, we'll be interviewing uh, two creations. Uh, one of them is Yura Vanich, who got second place. And uh, the other interview will be with Marco Kopacina, who got top 16. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoy those. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll let uh, future Christian take it away. We'll just cut to that like with the magic of editing. <laughs> And Colchesus would like to extend a warm welcome to our good friend uh, Jere Vranic. Jere, how are you feeling? Uh, well, good. A little bit tired, but fine. Yeah, I saw on Instagram that you managed to get to the uh, to the stadium uh, before yeah. you went home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we squeezed it in a little bit before the airport because yes. I made the guys take me there. Yeah. I, I still remember how uh, how sad you are. When was that in? In Paris, um, or yeah, 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 where we couldn't go. Uh, so yeah, uh, you you got your. Uh, do you have your uh, your dress? Uh, or how how do you call it in English? Uh, oh, a jersey. Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the back there somewhere. So with all the other luggage. Okay. Um, oh yeah, and uh, what, uh, some of that luggage was the Anka sheet, which you uh, famously managed to get through the yeah. the uh, uh, like. A yeah. watchful eye of uh, Ryanair. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, apparently these guys are, are much, much nicer in UK than they were in the Germany. Yeah, Germany. I was scared yeah, because you couldn't get it through, so I was panicking because I didn't even manage to buy a suitcase to take it in. But they had no problem with me taking it on the plane. Yeah, sometimes UK is based. Uh, okay. Uh, enough of chit chat. Uh, let's uh, let people get to know you, uh, Yare. Uh, when did you start? What did you like about the game, if anything? Uh, um, why, did, why are you sticking with it, and so on? Yeah. So I started in OPO one, not at the like beginning of the game with the pre-release decks, like all of you, I think, but a little bit after because I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh. And my good friend who was playing with me told me, like, this game has packs that you can sell for more than the entry price of the locals. Just come play it even if you don't like it. And I came to play it and I really liked it. From the design of the cards, and uh, like the artwork, I mean, to the gameplay. And then I even read the manga and I also really liked it. Yeah, so, so you were the same as me, like manga after the, the card yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but see, that's how these card games get us in. Like, the Eastern Europeans, if you can make money on it, wait, I mean, maybe this is this is a good card game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, the UK friend did not continue, right? It was... Uh... No, it's, it's Sandro. Ah, ah I, I thought you were talking about Carlo. Uh... No, no, no. Okay, yes, yeah, so Sandro is uh, still a bit well in uh... Yeah. Kicking in the community. So yeah. how, how has your okay. journey been through 
for the last year and a half that One Piece has been out that you've been playing? I because mean, you did have some tops along the way as well. Yeah, I had some tops, like mostly top 64 and a little bit upwards. But like, yeah, I was kind of a little bit frustrated with the game because I felt like at the local level and in testing, I had like better results. And then when it came to bigger tournaments, I just kind of felt like I either won one dice roll in 10 rounds or got some bad matchups. At one point, I was even thinking of not seriously, but like a little bit of quitting. And then Sandro was like a really good friend and he explained to me that card games have variance and you should continue playing and the results will come. So I stick with it. And this is a like a huge, huge point. I mean, how I always uh, try to emphasize that. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up and that you actually have a, a story to show for it, right? Yeah. Uh, the variance is very inherent, and both me and Hodova had a large chunks of time where uh, there were no results to show for it, right? Even though we yep. we know that we're good players and that we can perform, just things can happen. Uh, and yeah, uh, Yurei, I, I still remember when I took my list to, to the last uh, championship finals, uh, Purple, uh, Purple yeah. League. And we were banking on basically not seeing Zora, or at least seeing one. And I think you played three Zoras yeah. that tournament. And two were like the first two, two rounds. And then you get stuck in the, like, how do I call it? Like, hole of Zoros there, zero two. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there, there was also a little bit, you, you just had also extreme bad luck where you took Christian's Moria list and it was like Black Hill Luffy, Black Hill Luffy, Black Hill Luffy, Black Hill Luffy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, like... that as well, that as well, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean by the bad matchups. Like, in this game, it seems really like, I don't know, it's not as much as I thought because I won't spoil it for this event, but I also had some bad matchups, but I felt before like it was quite rock, paper, scissors with the matchups. Like if you, if they just flip a certain leader and you see it, you're like, ah, I don't even want to play, but it's sometimes you can like stick it out, I guess. I don't know. Mm, it, it, it's still not as bad as some games. So it's not all gloom and doom, but it's definitely not ideal. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, okay, Yone, shall we go to the... Liverpool. Sure. Uh, okay, uh, we get there uh, without any trouble <laughs> this time. Uh, everyone has got their password, including me. <laughs> uh, uh, you decided on Luchi. Uh, that was relatively recent, or were you planning it for a while? Um, no, I was like two weeks before the event. In my head, I was like, for sure. I just want to play like a new deck that or something that people won't have an idea what it does, you know. Well, I mean, I want it. maybe not even that, but like that isn't so prevalent and that can catch people off guard. So I was telling Sandro, like, I have exams, I won't be able to test, you have to carry the testing, play Dolphy, play Perona, play everything. He said, not, all those decks seem fine, but nothing really seems like viable. And then a few days before the event, Hervoy mentioned Rebecca. And I was like, yes, okay, a nice deck. I was like, at the airport, you're going to explain to me what it does and I'll play it. I tell Sandro to take all of our Rebecca stuff. We get to the airport and he says, like, you have to mill the whole deck and like rearrange it in a certain order you go to time often and i said okay i'm not playing that what other decks have you brought and it was between bonnie and luchi and i thought bonnie has a bad matchup into luchi so i just took sandra's luchi list mm -hmm. i mean uh, to be honest for that rebecca you only have to do that in some very specific matches but yes it, it's uh, it's something that you you will ha probably have to do in a tournament. Yeah. And, and you have to play fast to avoid getting into time, which I, I actually got into time once, I think, in the entire tournament. Yeah, I, I, I think once. I lost round, right? Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so that was quite a roller coaster to get to yeah. there. <laughs> Yeah, but you passed the exams, and that's what matters. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did. <laughs> you did? Did you tell us that you did? I passed like two, but one is this week. Yeah, right. like the I failed, and I have to go this week again. Okay. Well, and one... Yura is a student of medicine for yeah for those who may be yeah. unaware. So, so a legit doctor. A I doctor mean, soon. To be, to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, we get to Liverpool. Um, uh, do we even test on Friday? Other things we did, right? Mm. Yeah, we, we tested some on, on, on the way there. <laughs> and we, we, we weren't in the same hotel, so we yeah, don't know what they were doing, but uh, yeah, sure, yeah sure. We, we tested like until I don't know, maybe 1 a.m. I don't want to say it was too late, but we did like I played one game against Sandro on Blake Yellow Luffy. So he told me the game plan against that deck, and I played a, l a little bit more against Nami because they told me it's a bad matchup and uh, they think they will there will be a lot of Nami. Mm -hmm. That is something that definitely yeah we talk a lot about uh, a lot about internally. Uh, we really expected uh, a lot of Nami, and uh, a lot of our decks did not uh, pair well with Nami. Except, uh, surprisingly, uh, Rebecca ended up being extremely good in Tsunami. Okay, uh, sure. And then we hit the the day off. Uh, how did the Swiss go? Yeah, well, the Swiss started very well. I didn't have, like, it was... If you want to know about the matchups, I don't know, like, all of them in order. But I just meant the other, like... I, I think it would be best if you just like tell the stories. Like, if there's any like interesting game, tell yeah. us about that. Uh, I mean, I had like five mirror matches, I think, or four. So those weren't really interesting. I guess the only thing I learned on the day playing from some of those games is I had an idea in my head that from the past black mirror matches that whoever has more Morias just wins. But like at least two of those, I I had less Morias, if any, and Sabos carried those matches. Like you can sometimes win just by uh, attacking. I don't know, like going aggro. If you see, you can't win in the long game. Uh, that was so. Yeah, the first four rounds passed like they were smooth, and then after round four. Like, I got uh, on table around 30, a random deck check. And in my deck box, I had, like, sleeveless some cards from the participation packs, like, in the back. So you and opened the, the packs, you didn't yeah. know where to put the cards, you put them in the deck box. Yeah, and... I, uh, I mean, I was a little bit stupid, but yeah, I put them in the box. I didn't think much of it. And then the judge comes back, who, by the way, he is like a really nice guy, even though I was mad at him a lot. He comes back, he tells me, you have a game loss. Um, my first reactions, I go through the five phases, like my first reactions are like, okay, you're joking, funny guy. And then he's like, I'm being serious. And then I'm like, okay, take me to your supervisor. I go Karen mode. And I go up to the head judge. He also tells me, like, yeah, it's just plain and simple in the terms and conditions, whatever. I don't know what Policy it's called. The yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're getting a game loss. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm like, okay, I want to appeal to Panda. I'm going to make a scandal, blah, blah, blah. And then I had to go. But at least the good thing is I didn't get a game loss for the round I won. But for the next round, so I had like a whole round to go cool off outside the venue and like punch some air, I guess. Mm, uh, which is, yeah, they're very lucky because like you were going super hot, you're 4 0, and now yeah. you get animals for the most random thing ever. I mean, yeah. I mean, the judges it. aren't to blame, is what I told to them. After I found out I talked, once I was 
happy. I went and apologized. But you did actually. That, that, that's that's very good. That's very good. Yeah, but I still really disagree with those rules because I don't see the point. Like I don't know. I can't see a scenario in which you have leave out cards even if they were playable which they weren't they're slipped out in my deck box and what i'm gonna see a matchup and like take cards out of my deck out of sleeves without my opponent noticing i don't understand it i mean i definitely agree yeah uh, I, I i can see the like what what i can see is like that sometimes crossed my mind that people see what you're playing and then they they have like two decks and then they choose one or the other, but you, you can still get deck checked. So, yeah. but this specific, like having unslipped cards in your deck box, uh, I mean, I, I, I get it. It's like a, an illegal deck. You have like your deck box is the thing you are submitting, right? Uh, is the thing you gave them for uh, for deck check. So, I, I mean, technically, yeah. I, but I also agree that it's. Uh, especially not for a game loss, maybe a warning. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought it would be because I remember like when they say you have marked cards, like in some, I don't know, in some way, like a sleeve is bent or a card is chipped, maybe even unintentionally. If my memory serves correct, I think you get only a warning and not a game loss. I could be wrong, but that seems like a bigger issue to me than like some random cards in the deck box. I don't know. And I always talk, we always talk about intentionality. Like, if, if it looks like you did something even remotely intentionally, and this has a very, very, very good, easy explanation. Like, you open the participation yeah. packs. Uh, you put, like, it, it's very easy to see that it was intentional. But uh, rules are rules, so that's why. not fine in the end, so it's okay. I, I think it is more than fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so that's round five. Yeah. And after the break, I also went up to my opponent at the, because he sat down at the table and I was like, okay, let me see. He's playing Luffy or Nami. I would have lost anyway. I'm going to go and enjoy my break. And I see he's playing Bonnie, like a good matchup. And I'm like, yeah, no way. But yeah, after the break, I lost one more round to Nami. I, I I don't know if I played that round correctly because I had the proper name Nami testing after day one, so I could have misplayed. And the other rounds, I I really don't have anything like to point out. Not any really interesting matchups or something. Yeah, just, just a bunch of witchy meters at that point, right? Pretty much, yeah. Very cool. And uh, you end up day one. X2, right? Yeah, 31st. 31st. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know you're playing... Uh, so we, we go back. Uh, uh, we split, we, we go with the Germans. Uh, you go FC, right, I think? Yeah. And... Uh, five guys. Five, yeah, 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 five, five guys, five guys. KFC was there, yeah. yeah. Um, but we do do meet uh, later uh, at our place for, for some testing. Yeah. Um, and you knew uh, the deck you were playing against, right? Yeah, Nami. Yeah, the entire top cut was open deck list, so you could even just see the exact list that they were running. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Luca, who was uh, who stayed with me and her uh, in the same room, uh, was on Nami. And uh, therefore, uh, you two guys uh, jammed uh, all, all other games, yeah. Yeah, Luca, uh, like, shoutouts to him. He helped me a lot, like, but he gave me, uh, if I say it, he gave me more intricate, like, I would say, tips for the matchup, which I wasn't even in the, like, state to fully comprehend. I mean, he said, at this point, you have to check all of these events in the trash and then count up the cards in life divided by two. And I'm like, can you simplify it, please? And then Heroi comes and he gives me his spreadsheets for attacking and that carried me in the top cut. So <laughs> there, there's the Patreon article on that. So feel yeah. free to check it out. Uh, OK, uh, so we prepared for uh, for Nami. Uh, we go to, to the top. 
Uh, how does the first round go? Yeah, the first round, I mean, it went like it was the thing that was unconventional was that he, he, I had no choice of going second through the whole top cut because I was 31st and he let me go second, which I don't know about because I didn't test a lot, but it seems wrong, I guess. Uh, and he had in the top 32, he had like a lot of the draw two triggers. So I thought I would lose, but he told me his hand like just wasn't good after the triggers. And I'm not versed in the Nami deck, so I don't know. But yeah, I won 2-0. That's all I gotta say about that matchup. I guess he got unlucky because sometimes when he had like leftover dons, he swung seven at face and he just happened to like do it twice in a game and mill two pilafs. Like that was funny, I guess. Uh, yeah. okay. And then, and then the top 16, where you played, I believe, against your first starter Luffy, which is which yeah. is the unexpected choice. Yeah, I was like out of the frying pan and into the fire after the I Nami just, round. I, I just still remember you like round two or three, like Kristen, this this Luffy, like what does he do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know what the leader does, and I wanted to ask her why, but he was. Too busy being popular. Oh, so that's why you asked me. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I was like, okay, through the tournament, I was like, I hope I don't see it because everyone told me it's a bad matchup. I didn't see it. And in the top cut, like game one was the biggest blowout ever because he goes Isho, rips out one of my Morias in hand. I go Moria and he goes. Sabo cleared the Brook and my Moria, and then he plays his Moria, and I just... it's over. The game two, he didn't have an answer for my Isho, so I won. And game three was once again, like, I feel like he was in complete control, but I guess I just caught him off guard, and he just died out of nowhere. That's how that round went. Oh, did he just have, was he low on counters and you just went for lethal or...? Yeah, yeah, no, no, not even that. I, I think at one point, you maybe caught him without counters or something, but I remember him, like, taking two or three lives in one yeah. turn. Yeah, that was it. Like, it was just some random swings, which I didn't have intentions of going through at, that went through, and then my game plan turned to, like, two turns of just big swings and playing out Sabo. That's nice. We take those. Yeah. We take those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then top eight. It's once again, I see what I'm playing against, and it's the Nami that beat me day one. And also beat Marco in top 16. So Yeah. We could have had a Croatian top eight. But yeah, he makes me go first both games. And I don't know what, once again what to say. I just use the numbers for attacking her what it told me, develop some bodies, Isho him once or twice, and that's it. Another 2-0 against Nami. Yeah. No specific triggers, no, nothing like... I mean, he, he had some triggers, but I mean, he but didn't seem to matter, I guess. You also said he was the guy that was like using Apis very aggressively to play around Isho, right? Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you were like, okay, I, 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 I don't have to Isho if you Isho yourself or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think at one point he played Ka uh, no Furiosa, yeah, which misses yeah. into Apis that misses. Yeah, that was game two. He does that, and he was like, "I mean, I thought like I thought, why well, why are you mad that Apis missed? She has eight targets, but then he explained to me that it has quite a bit more. So I was like, okay, I understand. No, no, it, it, she definitely does, but." Yeah. Uh, only eight of them are what you're looking for. The rest yeah. are just like whatever. So, I, I still find baffling. So he had this in hand, and he was left with this in hand after doing that. So don't do that yeah. play, guys. As Nami's. I mean, he was going second, so he had to. But I mean, I always think, especially with Nami, do you really have to? Like it, 
you're gonna see cards, you're gonna draw cards, you're gonna see life like yeah. this way he I, I, I do believe that he almost threw the game on on turn on turn one. Like he lost so mm. so many cards and you could probably very easily just be fair, cruise through. It, it is high pressure environment and obviously if, if you've been playing for a while it does get tiresome, but and generally, as a principle, I don't think if you're playing Nami, the the only thing you actually play down on two of your one costs is the Grand Magnon, the whatever her name is, Gloriosa, and you, you don't Kai on turn one. You don't uh, like you shouldn't at least I think unless your hand is a bunch of Kai's, just Gloriosa and that's it. I might make a Nami guide in the future just because it is one of those decks that I think is. Very strong, and I think people are aware that it's very strong, but they don't know how to play it, and they don't know how to play against it. So the few who are actually good at the deck get to thrive, which uh, I think Luke has shown quite well, but got unlucky with the with the tiebreakers. We might feature him on another episode of the podcast. We'll see. Uh, uh, also, yeah. before we continue, I first have to say that uh, a lot of people, as uh, said, and uh, you said as well. Uh, are really angry about their luck and their <clears throat> and their matchups, right? You, however, just played three bad matchups in a best of three. Yeah. And one. So, like, uh, sure, yeah. you definitely are unfavored and things have to go your way, but it's definitely not impossible. And it, it, it's simply part of the game, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, we beat Nami, we beat Lu uh, starter 14 Luffy, we beat uh, another Nami, and now are, we are in top four. Yeah. And that's it, a mirror, right? Yeah, it's a mirror match. Like, uh, against the American player, even. Yeah, yeah. Player. yeah, I was like just baffled during game one because this time he was the one who had like, he had in the start of the game zero Morias and I had two. And he was still ha somehow like ahead in cards in hand, cards on board. Because he was going Rebecca something like just without the Moria, like think of OPO5 Sakazuki. That's how it felt with uh, Rebecca Hina Luchi combos. But yeah, I don't know. It was just I was feeling what is this guy doing to be in such a good position if I have two Morias? And then I ran out of Morias and he started drawing his Morias and then he just beat me game one. Uh, game two, I honestly think, once again, I don't know, I think you guys were watching from the side, but yeah, we had this game, it was like similar top end cards. We both cleared each other, each other's board, and then once again, it was just like Sabo and Punching Face, I think. It was also quite a random win. And game three was yeah because he was, he resolved Sabo and then we saw him draw into non counters and he already had non counters in hand and he has he pass on like Sabo four in hand and you have two or three attacks, but all of his hand is non counters I think or maybe there was one one K and like now I remembered and this will be quite important for game three, uh, your opponent is playing a list with six two Ks and the zero cost. Thank God I saw that I could see that before the round because I definitely like. Kept that in mind while playing. And just swinging six Ks. Yeah, whenever possible. And game three was like, I don't know, maybe the most like, I'll go for it, but I know I lost because we went into time. I think that just happens in a Luchi mirror in a best of three with one hour. He wasn't playing slow. I don't think I was. And we went into time, and it's like he has, I have one life, he has two life, and he has Rebecca, six in hand, I think, something like that. And I have Khalifa and Spandine on board. And I was like thinking about the, the, first of all, I thought like I asked the judges to count up the cards in deck, since... If I can just take one life and I have more, I win. And he had four more. So I knew like two of the attacks had to go through. And I was thinking of going 7-7-7. Seven, 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 and I was like thinking only about the pistol trigger, not about the Ice Age trigger. And I got punished because I swung with Khalifa instead of Spandin first. 
and I went seven phase. He took it. He killed my spendin. I thought, okay, it's over. And then, like, I had like a light at the end of the tunnel, and I saw, okay, I can go Moria for Rebecca Spendin and Luci to put back six. I win. Yes, I'm gonna win by having more cards in deck. And then I understood that I have seven dons. So I'm like searching for a Rebecca or a Spendin in my hand, but nothing's there. And I want to throw my cards and extend the handshake. And I see a six cost Brook. And I'm like, ah, six cost Brook, the Rebecca, six at life. You have six in hands. He throws away one salvo and extends the handshake. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, sure. That's insane. I didn't even know that's how it went down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's some game. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, cool. Uh, so after all that hype, uh, you know you're in the finals. Yeah. Uh, versus Black Elf, which is another bad matchup. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That top card was rough. Uh, and uh, that's the only time you were on stream, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, all the listeners can uh, can watch the game. Uh, yeah. Let me uh, yeah. To talk about that game since you can see it. The only thing is that, like, I knew I misplayed in the game one, and it was like even the a little bit after I did it, I just realized because I was just like, okay, I can't do it. I look through my trash, I see no Luchi, and I just abandon it, even though I have one on field that can be replaced. That was quite a big mistake, but honestly, in my head, I was just, okay, I'm going first, like, I lost the dice roll, let's say. He, I'm playing a bad matchup, he opened well, and in my head, I switched to, like, thinking what I'm gonna say after I lose, like, thinking of good comebacks, like, I wanted to be, like, my idol, her boy, he got second, so I got second and stuff like that, and I misplayed, but yeah, it happens. Mm. Okay, but then game two, there's another misplay, which is... Yeah, yeah. He was yeah, also the... thinking what he's gonna say after he wins, so he <laughs> returned me a misplay. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, and like, this is definitely, once again, a roller coaster of emotions. So, the, after, after the first one, you, at least from your, your, your stories, you, you definitely feel kind of resigned. Yeah. And then your opponent essentially gives you a win. I, I don't know how else to put it, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, so I wasn't even aware, like, once he was doing it, that he gave me a win, I was really checked out at the airport in my mind, and then I'm like, is your leader 5k? Once <laughs> he passes the turn back, because I see Garp and Kuzan on board, I'm like, okay, maybe I can win this one. Mm. And then game three, like, the my deck just betrayed me. I think I feel like yeah. yeah we also yeah. when you finally drew the Moria on zero life and you're like slap it into yeah. hand does nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Because the big bodies are actually almost essential uh, in that matchup to actually. Uh, I, I think play so. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. We just need something uh, to attack with. But yeah. overall, how would you rate the experience of of the Liverpool finals? I mean. With the results, like, I want to give it a 10 out of 10. The thing that happened round 5 knocks it down half a point. Because I was, like, fuming, really. I, I started to pull my hair out. and like, how did this happen? But it was a really good event. Uh, any other closing thoughts? Are, are we planning to attend any of the time. remaining finals? Because, yeah, sadly, this qualifies only the first place. So congratulations again to Benjamin uh, Flesh Noir. He is obviously one of the Europe's best players, so congrats to him. But uh, we all still want to go to World, so uh, will he be also going to the other finals with us and other creations? Yeah, I think so. I didn't check out the dates of the finals, and I have to see the dates of the... Exactly. College initiation party because yeah, yeah. I have to go to some, of course. 
And but yeah, I want to go to as many finals as I can. Anything you're looking forward to in maybe the opioid meta? That uh... <laughs> I mean, I was looking forward to Marco when he was revealed, but it doesn't seem like I'll be playing him anytime soon. So I don't know. I didn't like check it out properly. I guess the Jack guy. I'm looking forward to him. That's it. Uh, of course. Uh... One of our uh, listeners uh, would like to ask you, what's your opinion on Pedro? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, he sounds really bad to me. I don't know why he's so hyped about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, you do like uh, Bonnie in general, so uh, yeah. do you want to go back to it now with Kurt? Mm, I don't really know. Yeah, Carrot sounds like an insane card, but... It doesn't sound to me like it fixes the loot mm. that much. Without yeah. testing, it just doesn't sound like. First, you think like, "Oh, I'm gonna freeze Jack." Then you remember, Jack is not a seven cost. Yeah, it's an eleven cost. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that it, it it's definitely a a good card, but uh, doesn't fix the main problem why yeah. you're not playing Bonnie in the first place, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, uh, Jack is just insane. Though he, he which now lost without stage, he cannot do the free clearing of Hawkins anymore. Where he, where he just goes leader stage Jack. Now he has to put in some extra cards into that. But yeah, it's it's not looking it's like, like Lampus kick. Well, <laughs> it, it's not. Too, but yeah, but that's a done. I mean, sure, sure. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. a full turn off curve. Uh, so yeah, and Bonnie might be actually able to put up a better fight. But then there's the other side of it where. The Flamingo gets more popular, and uh, we know how Bonnie feels about blue decks. Uh, they run the events and swarm the board. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting format. Sure. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, thank, thank you for your time. Thank uh, you for having me. Congratulations once again me. on your yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, fantastic you. placement. Uh, for all the listeners, uh, we creations have a tradition where anyone tops uh, uh, that's the person who's paying uh, everyone uh, for dinner so uh, thank you also for, for the dinner <laughs> no problem and um, yeah the, do you have any closing thoughts any close shout outs yeah I mean I don't have to shout you two out since you're already here but <laughs> I guess shout outs to you too I mean to everyone that was there for the like support constantly once they knew I was doing well and shout outs to Luca, we already said it. And shout outs to my group being Sake, with Sandro being the main guy because the other two didn't want to show up to the event. And that's a shout out to Magic Omens also. Uh, which is uh, the local place uh, where we meet. So, yeah, if any of you are uh, in Zagreb, uh, come join us. Uh, and let like them host a regional or treasure cup in Croatia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we're leaving you to uh, your studies. Uh, yeah. And okay. uh, see you Thursday, right? See you. Good yeah. luck with the exam. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello, and welcome to our second interview where we'll be uh, talking to Marco Kopacina who ended up uh, top 16 in this um, season's uh, European Championship Finals in Liverpool. Uh, Marco, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great. Uh, yeah, I, I placed, I think, uh, 11th uh, after the top cut, lost the second game, uh, unfortunately, to Naomi. I'm feeling uh, amazing because I didn't really put much uh, practice into this tournament. I was more focused on college, college work, and then that went good, and now Liverpool went amazing. I mean, that does sound like the secret sauce for the, this Liverpool finals. Both you and uh, Jure were focused on college, and uh, yeah. you performed really well. Yeah, yeah, that that's the secret sauce, not practicing, for, for sure. Okay, uh, let's start with your deck choice. Uh, no, I know no, let, let's talk about yourself a little bit. How did you start playing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go uh, ahead. 
I started at the beginning of OP4. Uh, I bought the black Luffy and my brother bought, bought the yellow Yamato starter decks. And yeah, we, we just went to our locals with uh, starter decks. And uh, my first ever official game at locals was, was versus Hiroi Zoro. So it didn't, that didn't go too well. Uh, but yeah, I started opening 04 with Rebecca. And then transitioned into Bella Betty. And then I played, when I started playing competitively, I grabbed Sakazuki and Moria. And now I'm on Luffy for the past two months. What the redemption so, yeah. arc? Yeah, playing what are the yeah. Bella Betty. And then. And yeah, but I, 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 I won a couple locals with Bella Betty against uh, you two. <laughs> that, that definitely happens. Is that definitely the cap? We, we don't talk about it, but it happens. Yeah. Um, what happens at locals stays at locals. Okay, then, uh, how did you get into the game? Uh, if I recall, both of you were huge fans of the manga and anime before knowing about the card game, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I started reading the manga about seven, eight years, uh, years ago, and my brother was, was caught up since, I think, uh, Whole Cake. So, yeah, we, we were a big. We were big fans, and one day I came up to him. Oh, this game looks pretty interesting, and we came to locals, and we played mm -hmm. since then. Did you play any TCGs before this one? Uh, I only Hearthstone and stuff like that casually, and I tried Battle Spirit Saga when it came out. I really liked it, but there wasn't a big community in Zagreb, so I made a transition to One Piece. Yep. So me, me not really. Good often talk about how important it is for all of us that our local scene is so strong and so big um, in Zagreb. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, this was your big, uh, second big tournament, right? Because you only played uh, uh, Milan. Before. Yeah, uh, I, this was like, I, I would say my third stop. Uh, first stop was uh, with Get oh, Moria yeah. on non Online, I got 16 plays because Kerwe found a cheater in top uh, 10 and it pushed me to 16th. I straight up copied the Chura's list and did like two days of prep before the tournament, so that was unexpected. Uh, and my second top was in Milano, uh, what, two months ago? Uh, I got top 32 also with uh, Black Yellow Luffy. The same tournament, uh, me and Ron Vranic, the last uh, guy that was interviewed, talked. Yeah. And now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell us how you uh, chose the deck for the tournament. Um, in OPO 6, and in OPO 6, yeah, I transitioned between Sakazuki and Moria uh, because I really enjoy black decks and I wanted to play Luchi. I grabbed up Lucci right at the start of uh, OPO 7 to prep for uh, Milan Regional, but I didn't really feel good with the deck. Uh, when I, um, every time I milled uh, one Moria, I got so tilted and I dropped it like five, di five, ti five days into testing. And then I just picked up Luffy because uh, every time I played against it, I hated it. So I, I thought it was a good pick, and since then I've been testing only Luffy. So I've been at one trick for two months now. Yeah, and yeah, I think it's it is the best best deck in format for sure because realistically it can beat any deck it comes up against. Like Luchi has Luffy, uh, which is a tough matchup. Bonnie has. Luchi, but I think Luffy can beat both of them pretty okay, especially with the Ten Kuzan for Bonnie. Yeah, how how did you decide on that uh, more control build with Kuzans? Uh, I uh, straight up copied the build from the Eastern players. Uh, Noel posted it on Twitter, and at first glance, I hated it. the four finger pist finger pistols, two Ten Kuzans, and four little Kuzans. Uh, seemed really off, and then I tested a little bit on the sim because I'll, I'll try it first, then I'll 
I shit on it. <laughs> and it performed really well on the simulator. And then I stuck with it because it can beat Bonnie. And I thought in Mil in Liverpool, there, there would be a lot more Bonnie than there was. I thought Lucci would be less uh, popular. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, we all, you and me had a lot of discussion on uh, on the two different builds, uh, yes. and uh, the reasoning is uh, the controller build is definitely more uh, geared for Bonnie, while uh, the more aggressive build with uh, Aces is better into Nami and Amir. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I was scared of Nami. Me and Shurlais, he said argued a lot. He said he will see more Nami, and I thought I will see more Bonnie. And I wasn't prepared for Nami at all. Uh, I didn't even practice uh, practice against it. And my only two losses in the tournament one were against Nami. So I guess I guess Shura was right. I mean, <laughs> you're the one with the better results, so... Yeah. And you beat all, uh, the, all the... Did you play against any Bonnies? No. Ah, so you beat all the bunnies, okay. Dude, I beat yeah, I a bunny with my build. Yeah, but... Uh, I mean, uh, the, the ace build is also not as bad into... You just have a different game plan. You essentially uh, go first and go very, very hard. And that does what yeah. happens. You, you put them very easily to zero, and uh, they will try to yeah, stabilize with kids. Maybe they don't even play kid, maybe they don't even draw kid, but even if they, when they do... Uh, you just you, beat them up. Yeah, you, you can yeah. still, you have a lot of big bodies, uh, your Rocket Luffy's can KO uh, the blockers. Uh, with Ice Age, you can even KO uh, the kid. So yeah, it, it's definitely not... Uh, yeah, I, 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 now I, I now I'm happy to know what the official translation for Sonic Previous is to, to English. Just beat them up. Just, just, beat, uh, them just up. beat them up. Just uh, beat them up. But yeah, My uh, wish is uh, for this match. Every Luffy build that topped was some variant of that build where it was Kuzans and Tenko's Kuzans and Finger Pistols and no Aces. Did that surprise you? Or were you kind of expecting that uh, to be the dominant build? No. I, 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 I thought it, was, it would be the dominant build because it was all over Twitter. Uh, even Cross made a video about it. So I thought I, I was afraid. Uh, Bonnie would Bonnie players would catch up on it and start attacking us uh, a little bit earlier if they thought the ten cross Kuzan would drop. But uh, as I uh, made a discovery in the tournament, I think the four Kuzans and finger pistols were also great against Luchi because if you know the timing to drop uh, Kuzan like with Sabo or before Mori Aisho. It puts a lot of pressure on them. They can't drop their big bodies, and they if they don't have big bodies, they're just insta loot. And I popped a lot of uh, zombie Luffy's with finger pistol. Yeah, we also saw that in the finals when uh, when Benjamin did it to to Yurei when yeah, he tried to stop the zombie. Did it one time with uh, Sabo, I think. Uh, the the yellow sabo, yeah. The yellow sabo, yeah. Oh yeah, that as well. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, so, yeah, I think yellow sabo kind of fixes the problem of um, essentially uh, yeah, uh, playing for starvation, and then you really have to awaken very fast. Yeah. And so if I tested, if I tested a little more, I would probably change one or two finger pistols for yellow sabo. I I think it's nice. Yeah. I agree. In that build, I also agree that that is the change. Yeah, I tried four yellow sabos, and that that was horrendous. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, so how uh, how were your rounds in the tournament? Uh, I played them? I played uh, five uh, luches and morias. I think four luches and one moria, uh, and I beat them all. Yeah, it's it's a and versus re really good players. I think my my tiebreakers were amazing. I think at the start of the 10th round, I had 67% of tiebreakers. Uh, I played uh, one Black Luffy, we'll get into that later. Uh, I played one Enel, uh, Reiju, and I think two Mirrors. So, and one Nami I lost to. 
So yeah, Novani and the Nami I lost to. I, I said before the tournament and even before the top cut. If I don't see any Namis, I'll for sure make it. And two Namis beat me. Okay. Um, any anything of notes in those games in the Swiss? Uh, uh, I had interesting uh, two sec uh, last rounds. In mm -hmm. the line, uh, I was in the going to round nine. I was what seven one, yeah, uh, seven one. And if I win one more game, I'm uh, for sure in top cut before because my tiebreakers were so good. Uh, I came to Herwoy to ask him if uh, my tiebreakers were good enough for top cut. Uh, and in the ninth round, I see I'm about against uh, Giovanni. And I'm like, oh, 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 shit. Uh, the, the giant, the final boss before Top Cut. Uh, I, ad I admire uh, Giovanni ever since the, uh, who's a, the stage build with Sakazuki when he crushed the uh, Churla in the finals. And he's, he's such a great guy. And yes. we, st we sat at the table. Uh, sh shook hands, introduced each other, and the judges uh, came up to us and said uh, Giovanni uh, received a game loss for this for this game because he was missing one Kuzan on deck check. Uh, yeah, that was uh, uh, fortunate for me, but I felt pretty bad because I wanted to play Giovanni in a real competitive game. Uh, I really wanted that, and we played one game for testing for. He, he, yeah, one game for testing and he beat me with, uh, Black Wolf. Uh, yeah, really, they, they really cooked with Black Luffy. I don't think it's that good as they're saying. I think a lot of it was because of the element of surprise. Because I came into that game nine and I didn't know what to do against it. He put me uh, the Rebecca watch for five. Five costs and I couldn't rocket Luffy it, uh, and my whole game plan went out the window. So I think a big part of it was the element of surprise. Uh, and yeah, then I grabbed the two uh, starter deck uh, Black Luffy's because I played the top cut versus Gianluca uh, and practiced with Herwoye and Sandro for top cut uh, for it. And it was, I think, if you're going second, Whoever is going second is slightly favored in that matchup. I think so. For sure. Uh, and I had in an interesting 10th round. I played against an American. I don't know his name. He was with the group of uh, Nikki Goldman. And that group of Americans, I think four of them out of five made top cut. I think so. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, and I, I had already uh, locked in my uh, top cut. I had, yeah, as I said before, 67% tiebreakers. And he had, he told me, 57% tiebreakers. So all the marbles were on, on him. Uh, it was his game to win or lose. Uh, and we played the game. And it came down to, I had two, ca two cards in hand, both two Ks. Uh, because I knew uh, he can go 10-10-10 with his characters and leader, and I had one blocker, 7k leader, and one life. And the ten, first 10, I let go. The second 10, I block. And the third 10, uh, I show him Hiori and Flappe from hand, like counter with it. And he gave, gives me a fist bump, and I'm like, okay, so like, yeah, nice. Uh, and I tell him, I'm... Like, I'm sorry, man, I hope uh, you make it to, to Top Cut, because I really hope he seemed like a really nice guy. Uh, and then, and he reacted like, he reacted com confused, like he, he won the match. He thought I countered with Garp and Hiori. And we had a discussion, we, and even my, one of my, one of my friends saw the end of the game, and he confirmed I had two, two Ks, but he's my friend, uh, so he's, Opinion doesn't really matter. And the head judges came up to us and they awarded me the game win because uh, the American guy, sorry, I don't remember his name, 
uh, first extended his hand and gave me a fist bump. Uh, so he conceded the match uh, because he cooked first. And then I got the uh, day after. Uh, well, I just want to clarify. I I don't think he wanted to cheat or anything. I I really had two two case. Uh, I wouldn't cheat in a game ever. I don't even like winning in time. That feels like cheating to me. Uh, I think he was just confused at the. It was the final round. We were tired, and it was a the most important game of the tournament. So I think it's, he like especially if you if you just put cards on the table and put them to trash, it possibly easy to to confuse some of the artworks. Yeah, yeah. I really think he didn't want to cheat. He he seemed like a really really nice guy. We had a nice chat during the during the game. I didn't see any, any ill intent behind his words. Uh, but yeah, then Nikki Nikki attacked me, but that's that's fair. He, his guy he said I cheated, so I would listen to my guys. Uh, and then the day after, they attacked me on the in process Discord server that uh, I was cheating. And uh, Herwe here defended me. Thank you, Herwe. And I just want to say I'm not, I'm not a cheater, man. <laughs> like I I really am not. I have I think two good players to back me. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter whether they're good players or not. Uh, of course, we, we do know you, you're, you're a local player, and uh, cheating is definitely very front point in our community. And uh, so, I mean, at the end of the day, I wasn't there. I definitely do believe you based on, like, one year of playing with you, right? But at the end of the day, the judges were also there, and they made a decision, and therefore uh, I think that that should conclude there. And this uh, personal attacking, like, it, it's being called a cheater somewhere publicly is not something that um, ever feels nice and uh, should be taken. I think people do it too liberally. And I don't think that is the way we want this community to uh, proceed. Yeah, I, yeah, I think. It, it definitely is. Yeah, so I obviously wasn't there either. We we just heard about it after the fact, but I think like when when it's a he said she said, well, you kind of have to respect what the judge decided. Like personally, obviously, I would always assume you're not cheating just because yeah, we've known you for a while, but that's not a factor to somebody from yep. U.S. from France from Italy who doesn't know you. Uh, but yeah, just calling people out with no evidence in public chats is a bit uh, a bit too much, especially when. And the che actual cheaters who, you know, have video evidence of them cheating kind of get away scot free. Like, uh, there's some names out there, uh, like Deep Patel, that comes to mind immediately, or confirmed cheaters. Like, you know, if you want to you hate someone, you got those guys. But uh, when it's he, he said, she said in the last round of tournament, and it's a very reasonable scenario where a judge made a, a reasonable ruling on the spot. Uh, I think you just have to respect it and assume that there was a mistake in communication because... Yeah, people get confused in, in late rounds, people get confused in early rounds even. It's yeah, just part of the game. Like obviously personally, but I'm biased, I would I would never believe a cheating story about you or allegation, but uh yeah, that's not reassurance to somebody who doesn't really know either of us, so Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it definitely felt bad. I felt horrible after the game ended. I didn't want to win my last game like that. Uh, I mean, the, the biggest thing is like the win or lose didn't matter for you at all because you knew you had good tiebreakers, yeah, you knew yeah, you were like, I, locked in. Yeah, I was 100% locked in in top cut. It only gave me the dice roll, which is like, it's good, but it's, it's not. It's definitely important. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, it's not. I mean, uh, you, nobody you, you're you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, I mean, Yurai didn't have die roll for any of his top cut. Uh, I didn't have a die roll for any of my top cut in back in January, so. Yeah. It helps, so but it's the best of three. The most so important easy. thing is to make top cuts. I, I definitely agree. Role. I definitely agree. That you... Uh, yeah, to... it definitely felt bad, uh, especially when uh, Clyde uh, called me out uh, on, on their Discord. That felt uh, horrendous. Yeah, ultimately, you, yeah. you, you can't expect people to side with their own, with their own group. Yeah, yeah, it's I understand just... that, yeah. 
Uh, other than that, then yeah, day two came. We we got in some testing for uh, yeah for the we, black we Wolfie matchup. The Sorry, fourteen Wolfie, uh, because there are two black Wolfies somehow. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Shout us to Justin Tillman. I'll never not bring that up. Like Jesus. Um, and yeah, then it was. Oh, did did you already tell how that match went in top thirty two? Or I don't no, think no, it. No. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got uh, lucky as well there. So the whole tournament, I got pretty lucky, pretty lucky. Uh, the top top 32 came, and the judges were really strict with the deck checks. Uh, in Milano, it wasn't like that. Like, I had to re-sleeve my deck in the seventh round of the Swiss, because my sleeves were old. I get that. I didn't change them. And I had to re-sleeve my deck again at the beginning of top cut, which I re-sleeved the day before. So they were, they were really, really strict strict with it. And my opponent, Jean-Luc, 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 okay. Uh, uh, I think it's Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc, okay. No, Je, as in Jean-Luc, okay. Je, okay. No, we, he played the starter, starter 14 Luffy, the black one, the new black one. Uh, and he got the game one loss because his cards in the deck were bent. Uh, which is pretty, pretty dumb, because I think 25 of the cards in deck were bent. There's no pattern, no anything. So that ruling was, like, he, he, uh, as the head judge, he asked more judges, and they gave him the round one loss. But yeah, then... Was he, was he single game. sleeving or double sleeving? Oh, that, that I don't know. Because uh, generally, yeah, there are some types of cards which you kind of have to be careful if you're playing them in your deck, like uh, judge promos, notably these championship promos or the from those binders, like the best selection uh, full arts. They do bend a little more, and if you're single sleeving, you can kind of see those, and you have to you probably have to just double sleeve your deck at that point to make sure that it's not visible. Because if they can be identified, you will be penalized, and it's something that you yeah, just have to take care of, and. But yeah, 25 cards is a lot, so it's actually probably just the fact that he lives in, like, perhaps more southern Italy or something, and then there's just more moisture, because it's more, like, Mediterranean climate, and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, but there was no uh, connection to the cards. It was half the deck, like... The, the I mean, yeah, at, at that point, it's very it's... much random. Yeah, yeah, that ruling is really dumb, I, I, I would say. And then we played one round. And I got to go second, and I just pump, pump, Wait, Moria, Moria. Did, did he make you go second, or no, no, no? I yeah, that that's the other with uh, the dumb part. Uh, he got the game loss, and I <laughs> still uh, decide who goes okay. because I'm the uh, so see. Yeah, so both of the decisions was were like pretty dumb. I, I would say. I mean, I, I get it how it works, because uh, game loss is a penalty, and then yeah. you play a normal best of three without penalty. So rules-wise, sure. Gameplay-wise, it's... Uh, no, I'm pretty sure in every game, when you're awarded a game loss, you get the like the loser gets to choose for game two, just because they lost game one effectively. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. So I got, I, got, uh, I got really lucky uh, again. Yeah, it, it it was a pretty pretty lucky tournament for me. Uh, and yeah, I beat I beat him. Uh, I went second. I played uh, almost exactly as any other black deck. I think the matchup is fine. Uh, and then uh, came top sixteen, which was against Nami, and I don't run any aces. And didn't practice at all versus Nami. So, yeah, I, well, the games were close, but I misplayed the last round of the second game and lost. And, well, I, I did, I did really brick both, both games, but that's not important. I didn't put enough practice in versus Nami. That led to my downfall. Should the red guide? There's a guide. Should the there's a guide in Patreon, but... Um, yeah, should, yeah. Should, if I read the guide, maybe I, I could have been with Ranich. Yeah, in top 16, in top 8. Uh, 
If I won the match, we would have uh, met up in top eight. In top eight, yep. And um, uh, so I ha I would have had Luchi, Luchi, and Mir. For for and then next, another next game. Oh yeah, I see. What Luchi, you Luchi, and Mir. Yep. I mean, to be fair, uh, you did still pretty well, uh, even though the matches were not as good. He did amazing. He beat two Namis. With mm -hmm. Luchi and then in Black Black Luffy, he he did phenomenal. Like uh, all, all the respect to him, he's an amazing player. Yeah. Do you have any plans to attend the the upcoming finals in Paris or Milan? Uh, I don't think I'll uh, go to Paris. Uh, just I don't I don't really like Paris. Uh, but I'll probably try to make Milan. Yeah. And I had to I have to start testing opium rate. Uh, but I don't have a ticket. Here's a little thing we learned uh, during the trip, though. Maybe Canadian viewers can claim some of some of Marco's success here because, as it turns out, he's a Canadian citizen. I did not know that. Yeah, that like, yeah, none well, of us knew that. He just we we're at the this, airport uh, and he pulls out yeah. the, a Canadian passport. We're like, what the hell is that? And yeah, I have dual, dual, dual citizenship because my father was born in Canada. That's a good good bonus. So extra so points for Canada this time around. Yeah, yeah, the points go to Canada as well. So a little, little fun fact. I mean, I don't know how fun it is, but it's definitely a fact. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was entertaining to us during the trip, and then we were we, we asked his brother if he knew his brother is Canadian. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of fun with it. Um. Okay, man. Um. Uh, any closing thoughts? Any shoutouts you want to give? Uh, me or her? Uh, you, you. Oh, I'm, I'm here oh, every okay. week, so I think it's you. Okay, yeah, 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 that, that makes sense. Well, every week was uh, an exaggeration. The biggest, the biggest uh, shout out I have to give to my brother. Uh, he always believed uh, I was a good player. Uh, even I, I don't believe it even now myself that I'm a good player. I think I'm a, a one trick and got lucky. Uh, we'll see in the future. The yeah, the biggest shout out I have to give to my brother. Uh, he uh, bought me the cards because I'm a I'm a student. I don't have uh, funds to fund fund my own cards. Uh, he bought the boxes, the singles, and he bought he paid for the trip to Milan, which led us going to Liverpool and uh, now this and always believed in me. So Josip is the brother. Yeah, Josip. The, the, he goes to our locals as well. He was in Liverpool, but didn't perform so well. Well, we'll uh, teach him. And regarding feeling as not a good player, well, m mostly we're playing uh, locals, and our locals are a special place. So uh, <laughs> being beaten by, I don't know, Mihrova, Jura, or Sandro, or and any of the, uh, of the guys there, uh, what I'm trying to say is... Uh, uh, you, you should not think about that experience. Like uh, you're definitely a good player, and uh, you should not. Yeah, I didn't. I think I don't even remember when I came. Like more than three two in our locals. I think in the last month or so, I didn't go more than three two. So, and then I go to Liverpool. Uh, yeah. So we but, have we have a really really strong locals. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a big like, part. That's what I'm trying to say. Like. Uh, you have a higher you have a higher chance of having five difficult rounds at our locals than in the Swiss of a big tournament. That's for just... sure. We have top cut every week. Uh, Literally, what I'm trying to say is, uh, yeah, if you ever feel bad because of your performance at our locals, uh, it, it's an outlier. Uh, you go to big tournaments and you see your performance. Uh, that should be uh, truth enough for you. Yeah, I'm. I'm... Uh, for now, I'm two out of two uh, of on offline regionals, so that that that's I think pretty good. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mark. Uh, we will not hold you any longer. Uh, thank you for. Your I hope. Time. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope uh, you're done with college for for the year. Or are there any more? Yeah. I mean, it starts uh, in like a month, I, so <laughs> I don't think he's done. Uh, no, no, but for 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 the. For the current semester. Yeah. Yeah, I, I passed everything uh, that I went to. I, I, I 
uh, a couple of subjects I put on hold for next year, but that's okay. It's n it's not an easy point. For sure. Uh, okay. And with that, uh, we'll close this episode. Uh, thank you for joining us, and um, I hope you enjoyed all these interviews. Um, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.